Today, we're going to examine something called the right-hand grip rule, but I'm going to examine both the right-hand grip rules, and we're going to give you some tips as to how to do it and make sure that you don't get confused. So first thing we want to say, with the right-hand grip rule, you need to be clear about what you're talking about. There's going to be what I'm going to call the right-hand grip rule number one, and there's going to be what I'm going to call the right-hand grip rule number two. Now, both right-hand grip rules are right-hand grip rules. In other words, they both use your right hand and they use a grip. They have the same sort of gesture, which is kind of like a thumbs up. And we'll talk about what we mean by that. But you need to firstly understand what they're used for, okay? There is times to use right-hand grip rule number one. There are times to use right-hand grip rule number two. And there are times you can use both if you really know what you're doing. But without getting too sort of into the details there, when do you use right-hand grip rule number one? Right-hand grip rule number one is used when you are trying to determine the current of the magnetic field direction from a created by the current in a wire. So basically, if you're trying to, if you have like a wire that's going in some direction, so you've got a wire, you've got a current going up, you've got a magnetic field, uh, you've got sort of some sheet of paper, it's going to create a magnetic field that goes in this direction. If you're trying to go from the magnetic field, oops, if you're trying to go from the magnetic field to the current or the current to the magnetic field, that's when you will use right-hand group rule number one. Okay, so if that's what you use for right-hand grip rule number one, what would you use for right-hand grip rule number two? Okay, so that is going to be to determine the polarity of the magnetic pole and by extension, the direction of the magnetic field lines from a solenoid. So in other words, a coil. So what I'm saying with this one is, this one involves a coil. So for example, if I have a coil, right, I've got a coil and I've got a wire going like this. And I've got a current going through it. The current in this case will be going through like this. And that means that then there will be a north pole to the left and a south pole to the right which means that the magnetic field will kind of go like this, All right? So if that's what you're trying to work out, that's when you use right-hand grip rule number two. These are two different rules. Make clear, make sure you know which one's which. All right, so let's give you general tips for both rules. If you are using a right-hand grip rule, it doesn't matter if it's run one or two, then you should keep some tips in mind. First and foremost, that you probably keep in mind, it's called the right hand grip rule for a reason. You have to use the right hand. Very common mistake is for people to, because many people are right handed, they're writing in the exam using the right hand, and they come across a question where they need to work out the direction of something, and they go, okay, sure, I'll use my hand, which they use the other hand to kind of do it, and they'll use the left hand. And if you use the left hand, you'll get the wrong answer, you'll get the exact opposite. So. Note, using the left hand will result in the wrong answer. So make sure you use the right hand. Secondly, if you ever forget what the right hand group rules meant to like, how do you how to do it, then you can think of it kind of like a as a thumbs up. All right, it's a thumbs up rule. Not formally, of course, but you'll see what I mean when you see when you see, it's a thumbs up gesture. There's a thumbs up rule. The gesture, basically, whenever you want to click a like, um, you know, it's the gesture to give a like, right? It's, or say you like something. That's basically how you would do your hand. Now, if you've got that, your hand in that position, you recognize that your fingers are curled. 
And in both right-hand grip rules, you need to understand that the fingers represent a circle or it is curled up. And more specifically, it is curled around an object. Okay. So if we take a look at the example here, the fingers will, will curl around this wire. If you take a look at this example here, the fingers will curl around that sort of bit in the middle there. So to recognizing that, it's probably very helpful to therefore curl your fingers around. So have a pen to curl your fingers around. Because a lot of students, especially once they haven't used the rule for a while, they get forget about it and they get confused as to which way the fingers are going. The fingers aren't going left, right, up or down. That's not the point. The fingers are going clockwise or anti-clockwise because it's an entire circle. So the focus is on the direction of curling, not specifically left, right, up, down, etc. So those are the key tips. One, use the right hand. Two, remember it's like a thumbs up. Three, have a pen. So you might have your thumb here, you might have your fingers, but before you have your fingers, you're gonna have your pen doing this thing here, right? You've got your pen and then your fingers are then going to wrap around it. And that will give you a good idea of the fact that, oh, my fingers, are wrapping around this way, around that object while my thumb is pointing up. All right, so with those tips out of the way, let's look at an actual application of the right-hand grip rule, starting with right-hand grip rule number one. So right-hand grip rule number one, Remember, when is it useful? Well, it's used either to determine the direction of the magnetic field around a wire carrying current, right? And there's many ways you could use that. Basically, you're trying to get the magnetic field once you've got a current or the reverse to determine the direction of the current given the magnetic field created by the current. So you can either go from A to B or B to A, but basically it's linking basically current in wire to magnetic field. Either you're starting with a current and trying to get the magnetic field, or you're going the other way. Either or, it's the same. All right. So what do we do? Well, it's very simple. Remember it's a gesture and what you basically have is that the fingers, the thumb represents the direction of the current, I, conventional current to be clear. Okay. And your Fingers represent the magnetic field. So let us examine this scenario. So it's like this. So in this case, you can see that if you have a current going up, the current is going up in this wire. Therefore, your thumb is pointing up, is representing your current direction, is pointing up. Your fingers will therefore wrap around in a viewed from the top in an anti-clockwise direction. So your fingers will curl around like so. And they represent the magnetic field lines. And that's why magnetic field lines are anti-clockwise, like so. 
Of course, if you're heading downward, then it means that it's going to be going the other way. That's basically it with right-hand group rule number one. The only thing I will really mention briefly at this moment is that this is looking at it in a 3D perspective. Of course, if you're applying it to a 2D perspective, um, then we're drawing a 2D cross-section of this. So if you're trying to just draw, for example, this flat section, looking at this flat section here, and this is where some students get confused as well, if we draw a 2D cross-section, we recognize that the magnetic field lines are circular, so they're going sort of around in an actually clockwise direction. But if we look at it as a sort of horizontal plane cutting across right in the middle here, then you've got your Y in the middle. Then you've got the Y in the middle with the current going up. As the magnetic field lines, are, the magnetic field lines are, I'll draw it kind of semi 3D for now, going across the front and then back like that, like so. That's how the magnetic field lines are going. But what that then means is, as a 2D cross-section, it's kind of going around and into the page. So this is actually going into the page on this side. And then as it goes around the back and the left, it's actually coming out. And so that is the result of applying the right-hand grip rule appropriately and then just interpreting it and draw, representing that in a 2D way. So that might be confusing to some students, but just remember that's a question of 2D versus 3D. And that's also going to be very helpful. But I won't say too much more about that. And let's head on and talk about right-hand group rule number two. So right-hand grip rule number two, or if you like, thumbs up rule number two, still has all the same tips applied as right-hand group rule number one, which is use your right hand, make sure that you've got it in the thumb th thumbs up position, and also wrap your fingers around an object like a pen when you're doing this. And what is this used for? So the uses are basically determine the polarity of the magnetic poles of a solenoid that has current flowing through, you know, that is active. Of course, the opposite is true. Given the polarity of the magnetic poles of a solenoid, determine its current direction. And this is also an sim arm, the polarity of magnetic poles can be related to the magnetic field direction. So basically anything to do with solenoids and magnetic poles and the magnetic field direction along with its current. Okay. So in other words, this is the link between the current flowing through a solenoid relating it to the magnetic pole or field lines. And that is when you would use the right-hand grip rule number two. Exactly the same gesture, no difference in the gesture. There is a difference in what each thing represents, but the, the hand itself is the same. So what represents what in this situation? If you're using right-hand grip rule number two, then, your thumb represents the North Pole of the solenoid. And your fingers would represent the direction of the current through the wires. Now, it might be helpful to remind you at this moment that the magnetic field lines go from north to south outside the solenoid, but they go from south to north inside the solenoid, kind of like a magnet. So that might be 
helpful to determine that. Okay. I think lots of students think that magnetic field lines always go from north to south. They've had that drilled into them from junior science. Remember, inside the solenoid, it's going from south to north. Inside a magnet, it's going from south to north. So let's see how we could apply that um, into this situation and show a diagram depicting that. So basically, you have this situation. So again, you've got your thumb. Your thumb is representing the North Pole. And your fingers, again, are wrapped around representing the current direction. Now, when it comes to solenoids, it's really helpful for questions if they're well drawn to have this thing in the middle, all right? Otherwise, you, it's very, sometimes the diagrams are going to be quite ambiguous. But with this thing in the middle, you now can see that, well, if you know, let's imagine you don't know which is the North Pole, but you know the current. So the current right now is flowing. Uh, OK, so they have wrapped it in a very, OK, so this is a badly drawn diagram. Um, this is a badly drawn diagram. But luckily, we can fix that. So basically, this wire should be connected to the front. Okay, so, so this wire is going to the front and then wrapping behind, all right? And behind and behind and behind. So the focus here is that it goes in and wraps like so. And then once it comes out, it goes behind, all right? Importantly, what they're trying to show in the diagram, despite this error here, is that the current is wrapping, if you look from the right-hand side, if you looked at it from the right, you would be saying that the current is, well, going in a clockwise direction. Okay, It's wrapping clockwise when viewed from the right, which means that your fingers would be wrapping around in that way. And if you use the right hand, this means it represents the conventional current is wrapping around in that way. And that means your thumb would therefore point this way, which represents the North Pole. And that's why they have labeled the North Pole here. And that is true. If the North Pole is there, what that then means is that your magnetic field lines will go like this. Which therefore means, depending on which section you're looking at, but if you're looking at within the solenoid over here, then your magnetic field lines will be going from right to left or south to north. So within this solenoid, the magnetic field lines will be going from right to left here. 